Okay. I know what you're thinking. It's Tuesday. It must be tape day. Check this out. got through a friend of mine, uh, Ashley Hamilton. Ashley knew I was a huge fan of, you know, Scott and Stone Temple Pilots and, uh, he invited me down to lunch one day, so I'm having lunch with him and, you know, I come down and just kick it and I was like, no way, you know, so, next thing you know, I'm sitting at lunch with Scott Wilder. He's super cool. I mean, he's everything I could imagine he was going to be, you know what I mean? Huh, I wonder what that And he's just laid back and he's really, like me, all he thinks about is like, it seems to me all he thinks about is music. You know, I have one of the best teachers I could have in here with me. The idea just kind of got thrown around, you know, about me coming down to the studio and, and um, meeting the band. And um, so I came down and I listened to some of the songs and um, I really liked what they were playing. His melodies are some, you know, my favorite melodies in the world. Some of my favorite songs of all time are songs that he's written. And uh, it just happened, you know, I don't know. I, I wanted him to come down to the studio one day and do a song with me and came down heard some stuff and uh the next thing you know we're talking about him uh helping me produce the vocals for the album you know while everyone was kind of focusing on the sort of techno thing that was going on you know there was a sort of underground swell of of you know hard rocking bands again that were not on the radio you know and uh but were playing in front of you know huge audiences eventually you know a lot of kids who are you know hungry for that kind of thing again for excitement for a little bit of danger you know uh, i think they're an amazing band like, real dangerous probably you know them corn the death zones are probably responsible for sort of rejuvenating rock and roll you know, yeah fucking red hat the later part right. of the 90s the fact that they are one of the best rock and roll bands out there and definitely one of the heaviest bands but i understand the fact that they want to sort of challenge themselves artistically and kind of get a little bit more musical i think Man, the guy they're on points, is, um, is a, a you know place that i've been and um i think you know the ideas that i have the ideas that uh terry date has and the ideas that uh fred has um work well together so it's been pretty exciting so far it's it's just like, i mean it's here he's here you know i'm very grateful for it and, song we did with uh, me and him and Jonathan. We didn't plan on it. Jonathan was just coming down to listen to some of the stuff and maybe do a song with me. Uh, Johnny, you know Scott? Oh, what's up, man? Scott, how you doing? Nice to meet you, man. You too. I was like, Scott, you should sing on it too because it came with this crazy melody and, uh, you know, I don't know, it just happened. It's just, you know, next thing you know, we're sitting around writing, we're in a vocal booth, we're recording vocals and it's just instantly you know the dilemma we're going where we're working with here is uh of course i don't have any vocals <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm waiting to do vocals you know what i mean so what we got to do is take the song that's what i'm saying dude. It's kind of that's play whatever we'll whatever. play the we'll play the cd and you can you can yeah. just pick one it's not going to be playing nine all right it's not going to be this one dirty panicking did you record 1999 it's not that version. Not the French one. Fuck. That would have been the one. That would have bad, dude. So, alright, put up, uh, let's pick one of these heavy songs, man, where we got the dream team. <laughs> was cool like because I was doing that on the frame just like question answer thing like do the answer the verb are you feeling stuff like this stuff yeah. period so you could probably just go nail shit you're pretty good at improving 